Participant loans are like fire, all right? If you don't pay attention to it, it's gonna, it's gonna burn you, all right? But if you do pay attention to it and you use it right, a fire keeps you warm and makes our steaks very tasty, okay? Kind of the same thing with a participant loan. This is our never-ending series, Compliance on the Couch, where we're trying to help explain some very specific things about qualified retirement plans. Okay. So if you have questions about when it is the right time to take a 401k loan, or you disagree with what we're saying, please put it in the comments. So what is a participant loan? A participant loan is when a participant borrows from their plan uh, it's limited by how much they have in the plan that has to be their vested account balance, all right? And there are maximums. Uh, you can't borrow out more than 50% of what you have in the plan and you can't take out more than $50,000. And that's 50% of what's vested. 50% of what's vested, correct. So if you have $100,000 in a vested account balance, the most you can take out is $50,000. If you only have $10,000 in your plan, you can't take 50 out. You can only take out $5,000. It's uh, and that's always we're always talking about the vested account balance, all right? So what happens with a participant loan is that you're borrowing against your account balance. It's technically not a withdrawal, all right? It's still an asset to the plan. You borrow against your account balance the way almost every 401k and profit sharing and 403b plan is set up right now. You're borrowing from yourself and paying interest back to yourself. Once upon a time when I started in 1990, all right, participant loans, you weren't paying the interest back to yourself, but that's in a bygone era, all right? Now that almost every participant loan we come across is paid for with payroll deduction. Is it pre-tax? No, it's not No, it's not. It is not pre-tax, even when you have your participant loan uh, buying your house. So if, if you got a, a residential participant loan, all right, for 15 or 30 years, and you're using that to help buy your house, even that participant loan is not um, pre-tax. As you get into the weeds, the Sorry. thing to say about it, though, is if you take the loan out for $30,000, you get $30,000. But as you pay it back, it's out of payroll, right. and it's actually taken out of your money, out of not your gross, but your net. Right. But it's so. still taxable. So... Why should you avoid taking one if you can? Well, one, if you don't really need it. All right. When your money is taken out of the plan as a participant loan, it is out of the market. All right. If you had a $50,000 account balance in mutual funds and you borrow $25,000 out, you are taking $25,000 out of the market. So you are taking away $25,000. It's, it's kind of, it's an opportunity cost, all right? If the rest of your account balance is going up 20%, okay, that's a lot to wish for these days. Your participant loan balance is only going to be going up by what your rate, of, your, by what your interest rate was for your participant loan. All right, so you want to be careful when you use it because you are taking money out of the market. And actually the goal of a 401k plan is to save for, for, for your long retirement. long term, yes. So it's, it's kind of going against the goal, but, but there are some pros to it. And yes, so what are the definitely. pros, Chris? All right, pros are it's relatively easy access to your money. Uh, it's not an ATM. It can take a week or two. All right, we still got mail, the, the mail and money transfers and things like that. It's not an ATM, but it's still relatively easy access to your money. If you're borrowing a substantial amount, you, it doesn't affect your credit rating. All right. And there's no credit check. No, well, so, there's no credit check. So basically, no nobody's... No formal credit nobody's check. The plan administrator, which is not us, this is the capital P, capital A plan administrator, is only supposed to approve a participant's loan if they feel there's a reasonable likelihood that the participant will be able to pay it back. That's not the legal words, but that's the general gist, all right? Um, so it's different than a credit check. It's not a credit check, but there's supposed to be some general expectation that the person can pay it back, all right? Um, yeah, you Participants get to choose how, well, again, the document can restrict this, but for the most part, Participants get to choose uh, how long they want to pay for it. Most loans uh, are up to five years, 60 months. Uh, it's per payroll deduction. You can choose to have it 
paid over a shorter time span. And another part of the repayment flexibility is I have never seen a participant loan document that penalizes a participant for paying early. All right, so if you've got a five-year loan and 19 months into your loan, you can pay it off, pay it off. You're better off, all right? Nuts and bolts of how to do it. Yes, so, how, do you, how do you take out First out of off, you need to have a balance in a 401k plan, right? Yes. And it needs to be vested. Yes. Part of it. And vested. it needs to be allowed in your plan. And it needs to be allowed in your plan, and how you know that is you look at your SPD or your, your adoption agreement, you, right. or you ask your HR professional, do we have loans in our 401k plan? How do I get the money how out? How do I get the money out? And if you get an affirmative yes, then you ask for the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the paperwork, you fill it out, you give it back to the HR person and or owner, and they sign it, and you sign it, Oof. and then they give it to either the TPA or the place where the money That's is. That's the paperwork. A lot of vendors these days have this all online. So you can do it at two o'clock in the morning. You can do it at two o'clock in the morning. A lot of our uh, record keeper vendor partners have an electronic way for participants to log on whenever. Uh, hopefully the account is set up right so it knows what participant loan provisions are available. It's going to know within a certain, day, close enough to count uh, what your vested uh, balance is. All right. A lot of them let you do uh, online uh, participant loan modeling. Not all of them, but a lot of, a lot of them do. Uh, you go through, so when we're saying paperwork, a lot of times these days the paperwork, well, that's just old, us old people talking about what you do on the screen online. All right. There's still a process just because you go through it online does not mean there's money in your account when you wake up in the morning. All right. Somebody still has to approve it. Money still leaves, needs to go out. Sometimes it's an ACH, sometimes it's a check, depending on what you have set up. But, uh, and there is an approval process in terms of uh, the plan sponsor or the trustee, and usually your friendly neighborhood third party administrator is going to get involved to make sure the right people are getting out the right amount. Um, the payroll company, uh, the payroll folks, however your payroll's done, need to know that it's happening. I forgot about that because part. Because they're going to make sure that it gets paid back through payroll deductions because that is the absolute most common way to do it. And the, the way, way most it. loan provisions are set up it has right. to be that way. I think you can see that we're kind of bullish on the concept of participant loans under the right circumstances. <laughs> we're sometimes in a minority. <laughs> uh, a, lot of, a lot of plan sponsors don't want participant loans in a plan because it is extra work for them. They do have to pay attention to more things. Uh, you can have plans set up where there are no limits on participant loans, and those can be really bad. You can have people having many, well, many participant is, loans. I want to just say straight up to anybody listening to this, don't let there be gotcha. more than three. Because when you get to five, six, seven, well, and he likes only one, but when you get to a lot of loans, it, it becomes it, a payroll nightmare. Yeah, from a yeah, and just no. All right, uh, what are other? What are some of the other downsides of uh, a participant loan? Uh, you, I think we said this a few minutes ago. Your money's out of the market. Okay, and I know we're supposed to be talking about negatives, but. Uh, it is out of the market, but it's also paying yourself back a guaranteed interest rate. And if your credit card is charging you 22% or 27% or whatever, all right, and you're only paying yourself back 6 7%, that's less. <laughs> you're going to get it paid off sooner, all right? Uh, if, if you default on your participant loan, uh, it's a taxable event. Okay, it never goes away. Uh, even if you're still working at your employer, a defaulted loan amount reduces any future participant loans that you can take. Yeah, but you can always pay it back. And you're you can always back. pay it back. It's always out there that you right. can. Right. And once again, it doesn't go against your credit record. <laughs> right. The general argument against participant loans is that your money's out of the market. All right. Um, but if you're going to continue to make the 401k payments that you were making uh, and you understand that you have a short-term 
um, uh, opportunity cost. I, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say participant loans are a bad thing. They can be an almost a virtual lifesaver for a lot of participants. And another good thing about it, though, is I've been in a meeting with a participant before who's like, well, if I'm 25 years old and I'm putting money in a 401k plan and I never can use it for anything big that happens in my life, I'm afraid of really saving seriously in my 401k plan. And this way, for serious things, like you go, put in a lot, keep doing it, but I can take some out when I if need to need take to. a loan. Yep. In the early days of COVID, people being able to take out increased participant loans because of the CARES Act was a lifesaver for a lot of employers and for a lot of employees. So don't just say a participant loan is a bad thing. Um, the best way to use a participant loan is when you've had a look to see if your cost of doing the participant loan uh, is less than your cost of not doing a participant loan. If you've got credit card debt with a very high interest rate and that credit card debt is so high you can't afford to make any kind of 401k deferral, then how can you say a participant loan is bad because they're, that person is not making a 401k deferral and they're paying obscenely high interest rates. So have a look at the participant loan, but don't use it as an ATM. So if you need consulting, flexibility, something that works really well, sales at hunterbenefits.com. Ask the expert. Like, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Take care.